to remind us how important it is to get our family members, I don't think you hear me, into the kingdom. People we know, people that we are acquainted with, people that we pass by, any and every opportunity we have to engage other people. The drive in our heart, listen to me, the drive in our heart should be focused on getting souls, their soul, into the kingdom. Because when people are in the kingdom of God as his children, it does not matter what goes I need somebody to wave like this. Are we sharing with us today, and we ask you to please uh, share this video on your page and let others know that we're on. We have a powerful message in store for you today, and you're going to be blessed. You really are. Amen. In Jesus' name. God confirms his word with miracles, signs, and wonders, yes. healings, man. That we've been in for the last several weeks, and we'll be in for just a couple of weeks more in relationship to Bible study. Bible study methods. We're drawing information from a book written by Pastor Rick Warren, 12 Bible study methods, and we're now at method number eight, chapter eight, that talks about uh, book, background, methods of Bible study. Uh, there's, 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 uh, the, the best I do in these lessons is to give you a little flavor about what's going on and and uh, I determined to uh, share with you that the Holy Spirit desires for you to have and receive today in order to make a powerful impact to make a tremendous difference in your life and that does happen when you believe when you receive when you put into action the power of Holy Spirit, moving in your heart through the Word of God. And so uh, I'm going to uh, uh, briskly, just, you know, brush stroke, cover information about that particular chapter. However, there's an insight that I received from Holy Spirit as an opportunity to share with us, to have us be uh, more grounded, have us be uh, in, in communication and cooperation with God's desire, first for our lives, then number two, for the lives of people that we impact, and number three, this church. Hallelujah. <laughs> so then, as we go here, uh, the E-word message title for today is, What is Behind All of This? What's behind all of this? Uh, in, in, in my introduction statement, it reads like this, and I pulled this basically out of the book that talks about this particular Bible study method. Listen to the introduction. It says, the definition of the book background method of Bible study involves gaining a better understanding of the biblical message by researching the background related to the passage, person, event, or topic being studied. And in essence, what that says is if you're look at it in whatever way possible as to the background 
of that particular book, that particular person, that particular event, that particular topic. But I believe Holy Spirit guided me to, 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 to present it in this way, to call your attention to phrasing it like this. Now here you go. The definition of book background method of Bible study involves gaining a better understanding of the biblical message by researching the background related to Salvation Temple Church. <laughs> you sitting up in here, you've been coming here, you're part of God's hand moving in here, and therefore, wisdom say that it's important for you to appreciate the background of what this church is all about. How is it we are here? Why are we here? One of the, one of the stimuli for producing this message the way it is, is that I was listening to uh, Pastor Joel Osteen. They've been listening to him a lot of times, listen to him all the time, stuff like that. And, and, and it, 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 it dawned on me, it's like, wow, he's constantly talking about the fact that they acquired the complex in I mean, over and over again. I mean, no matter what he preaches, somewhere along the line, he's going to put in there, and here we are in the compact section. I used to sit right over there, had season tickets, but I drive by there, I get excited. Every time I come, I get excited because of what God has done for us to be able to be here. And he tells it over and over and over again. Why? Because, I mean, you people come. Because everybody don't get it the first time, but because it is a declaration of the power, of the grace, the mercy, the love of God. Amen. Now there are huge, humongous countries, seems of thousands of people. For them, yes, sir. Well, thankful. Reminded yeah. we should uh, uh, respect what he should, has done. And we should serve the way he wants us to serve, considering what he has done. Amen. Come on now, hallelujah. hallelujah. I think you might feel like you know where I'm going right now. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hmm? So, let's start with our main scripture text, which is the morning reading. Ephesians chapter 1, morning reading. Ephesians chapter 6, evening reading, okay? But in our main scripture text, I want us to see these words and re uh, uh, receive them and give consideration for these words in a very personal way, all right? So in Ephesians chapter 1 at verse 1, it reads like 1 and 2, it reads like this, Paul, an apostle which are at Ephesus, and to the faithful in Christ Jesus, grace be to you, and peace from God our Father, and from the Lord Jesus Christ. I said personal. Say out loud personal. personal. Say me and my house. Me and my house. Well, let's say it like this. Me and my church. Me and my church. Because if every member, say it, of my church, of my church. We're just like me. What sort of church would my church be? So then I want to read this again and have you feel something very personal here. Stanley, the apostle and pastor of Jesus Christ by the will of God. Oh, I see. Come on, come on. 
Ain't nothing <laughs> nobody else can do about it. Amen. 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 Come on. <laughs> some come, some go, some happy, some sad, but I'm still the best. Amen. By what? The will of God. Come on. Hmm? And then it says, to the saints that are at Salvation Temple Church. Hallelujah. I know it says Ephesus, but you get my point? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. Hmm? Yeah. And the faithful. Uh-oh. Yeah. Now, when we call faithful, oh, who said that be us? Yeah. That be us. And the faithful, which is us, which is you, and us, which is y'all people. Yeah. Uh, and to the faithful in Jesus Christ at Salvation Temple Church. Grace be to you. Amen. And what else? Say that word real strong. What else? One more time. Say it real strong. What's that word? Amen. And peace. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. So, grace and peace are delivered to the faithful in Salvation Temple Church, in Christ Jesus, from God our Father. Amen. And from the Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So grace to you from God. Amen. Grace to you from Jesus. Amen. Grace to you from the pastor. Peace to you from God. Peace to you from Jesus. Peace to you from the pastor. Amen. Because you are the faithful Amen. in salvation temple church. Amen. You want that grace? Say I'm not yes. Yes. You want that peace? Say I'm not yes. Yes. The requirement is to be what? Say faithful. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So then, it becomes important for us to take a little look at what is the background about salvation temple. How many of you all here don't know that we own this property full and clear? We have the warranty deed. How many churches you been at lately? <laughs> That has that deed and can flash it around yeah. and say, This us, right? Yeah. Yeah. You yeah. see it? <laughs> Why do we have the warranty to say, God worked it out? God God worked it out. out. Uh huh. Yeah. And in a couple of minutes, I'm going to tell you about how He worked it out. Why do you think I want to tell you how he worked it out? Why, why do you think I want to tell you how he worked out for this congregation to, to be in this building, in this property located where we are, uh, 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 full and good? Why do you think I want to tell you how he worked that out? Huh? To remind? To encourage. To encourage us what? That the same God... Oh, come on now. If you connect with me here, you'll receive something. The same God that worked out us being in this building, paid in full, will, has, worked it out for you to have blessing in you. You went through. Yeah. It doesn't matter what you're going through. Mm -hmm. it, it, I'm going to tell you a little bit about what we went through, but that don't matter. Mm -hmm. God handled it. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So then, uh, let's take a little, a little brush in the background of how it is that we are here. Number one, I was born in Springfield, Ohio. Little old town down between Dayton and Columbus. Little old small little old town. Most people in that town were prejudiced. Most people in that town were just, just two steps shy of being country. <laughs> and uh, no matter what, I, I, I was born there, went to school there, got in trouble there, uh, uh, had good times there, bad times there. 
But I got born again Amen. there. Amen. And what is that tie? That people that this church. Well, it's people that this church, but we use the pool over at St. John Baptist Church over here on the other Spring Street. Got water back time. And grew up Sunday school, grew up uh, teaching, grew up, ended up, got into ministry. It's been full. And December coming up, it was 1962. Two, was it before <laughs> high school or after high school? 69. 1969. So coming up this December, it's going to be 50 years. But the point of that part of the story is, you must be born again. When you want God to do miraculous things in your life, you want God to get you a new house, you want God to get you a wife. You want God to get your children in line. You must be born again. You want to have the maximized manifestation of the grace of God working in your life. The mercy of God working in your life. You must be born again. Now this whole sermon, I, mean, I could keep preaching now for months and months about what being born again means and how you should know that you're born again. And I'm going to flip right by you. There's a whole lot of things that you shouldn't do Amen. because you're born again. Amen. There's lots of things you shouldn't say because you're born again. There's a lot of places you shouldn't go when you're born again because when you get born again, you become the righteousness of God yes. in Christ Jesus. Thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And that's who I am. Told me about it. Uh, graduated out. Uh, went on to college. Got kicked out of college. Flunked math. All that kind of stuff. Come back home embarrassing to my parents and embarrassing for me and all that. And, uh, and then I got, went to work. Got myself together. Hmm? Went back to school. Amen. Yeah, graduated. I shot. Yes, I did. Amen. Central Amen. State University. Amen. Class of 1972. Oh, Go. Right. <laughs> for God, for Central, for State. <laughs> <laughs> then, when I left college, I recognized, or my wife, another, well, my wife really said, Oh, sis, you called to preach. You're going to have to be more than just some jack leg. You got to go to school, boy, and learn some things. So then, when you believe that there's a special calling, when you believe that there's a, there's a special thing in your life that God has for you, that means you need to do everything possible to equip, prepare, get knowledge and understanding about what it is that he's called you to do. Amen, amen, amen. 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 And that will not happen sitting up flipping TV channels or playing video games. Mm -hmm. There's a necessary effort on our part that required in order for us to be the best that we can be so that God can use us in what it is he has for our lives. Yeah. So then, just because God called you, that doesn't mean you run out and start yet yeah, yeah, No, when you find out what it is that God has called you to do, what your purpose in life is all about, then you prepare yourself. No matter what stage you are in, do everything possible to prepare yourself to be the best that you can be. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Well then, um, went on to seminary. Uh, I, 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 I quit work, went to seminary full time. She 
kept working while I went to school. Hallelujah. Amen. See, some of you all women working and your husband's still sitting at home. Uh oh, who's you? That's right. That kind of flipped out there. <laughs> <laughs> what a while I wasn't paying attention. <laughs> and some of you all let your kids lay around your house while you work. Did this, did this get kind of soft right here? <laughs> oh, okay. But uh, she worked while I went to school. And I graduated from seminary with a four point. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I had 11 A's on my transcript. I didn't come over, well, baby, see, they don't like me and they prejudice it. And the teacher against me. <laughs> she dedicated her life to giving me opportunity to get prepared. So therefore, I had to do everything I needed to do to be the best yeah. preparation. Yeah. And have you seen the have you seen have you experienced a preacher better than me? <laughs> <laughs> when I when I graduated from seminary. They awarded me the faculty prize for preaching. Oh, wow. Amen. They said I was, that's one, one award I got. The second one, I got the Outstanding Student Award. Oh, yeah. So I wasn't there chucking and jiving. Mm -hmm. I was taking care of business. Amen. Are you listening to this? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, and, and so in order for God to do the marvelous thing for you that he has done for us, you need to understand these kind of things I'm telling you. Mm -hmm. Number one, don't you be playing around. Number two, don't let somebody live in a, somebody under, let them be playing around. Playtime is over. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. So graduated from seminary, came up to Detroit, pastor, Greater Cox Baptist Church for a while. Yeah, I was Baptist born. Come on now. I was Baptist bred, yeah. And I, when I died, I was going to be Baptist dead. <laughs> Till they tried to kill me. And I, whoa, I got to get out of this. And go somewhere where they're not crazy. <laughs> so, so anyway, at a certain point, we organized Salvation Temple Church. Because that's little stuff going on and this and that. And they kicked me out and all this and that. And, and then, so that was in 1980. So then we started Salvation Temple Church and we functioned Salvation Temple Church until about 1992, somewhere around 92. And then the Spirit of God, was it 92 or 85? 92. The Spirit of God unctioned me to. Merge our church into Word of Faith International Christian Center and submit myself to Bishop Keith that brother, well, Pastor Brother at that particular time. And I served there for 16 years and 10 months and a certain number of days. <laughs> <laughs> and actually, I only went to do it for five years. Because I said, well, I'll do five years. My son will be pastor by that time and, and I'll go help him. And, and so when he's doing an excellent job down there in Houston, Texas, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. Ended up from a five-year effort, 16 years and eight months in another ministry. During that time in ministry, he traveled all around the world. I mean, I had I had so many plane hours and miles, it was just, it was just almost, it was almost overwhelming. Mm -hmm. I spent months and weeks in airplanes traveling to different countries. Sometimes three out of a four week month, I was in two or three different countries, two or three different time zones. It got to the place where if I came home and stayed two weeks in a row and went back, I would be wiped out by jet lag because I was living perpetual jet lag. Wow. But in the midst of that time, I had an opportunity to put my thumbprint on other countries and other ministries and other cultures and other congregations around the world. Hallelujah. Because 
of the will of God. Yeah, yeah. It wasn't comfortable. It wasn't easy. It wasn't convenient. And so forth. But God helped us adjust to be able to fulfill what it is he called us to do. And so then, the uh, fast forwarding up to, uh, I got kicked out at Word of Faith 2. <laughs> <laughs> just something about this boy he got he got a big old pad. So what's I left what's it and listen to me, I did a magnificent job of yes. 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 But anyway, so then then as a result of the will of God and the move of God, he led us to relaunch, to organize again Salvation Temple Church. January 2009. Mm -hmm. We had our first service over there on uh, St. Regis Hotel on the uh -huh. and stuff like that. Went through a lot of uh, this and that, spent a lot of money, some people took advantage of us and stuff and stuff and stuff. And then we had we were, we were tremendously blessed by different Seventh-day Adventist churches that let us use their facilities. Uh, we, we, we ended up spending time at, I think it ended up about five different Seventh-day Adventist churches. Uh, and they loved us too. They were, they were like, whoa, don't leave. <laughs> because we, we, we were good tenants. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We're very respectable and very responsible as tenants. We don't need the water running. Amen. We don't tear the screen door off. Yeah. Come on. <laughs> you know, we're out the gas, grass, and let the kids run off. Okay, so we're good tenants. So then, then there was a certain point in place where we were living up in Warren and driving back and forth different places. I kept driving by this area over here, uh, across 696. And one, one time, the Spirit of God unctioned me, look over there, over there. And I kept looking over and I saw the top of this building.